In this list of employees here, we've got a column G where there are some blank cells. Not everybody has benefits, and we might want to know how many do not. And that would mean counting the number of blank cells here. And there's a function for that, equal count blank. As you're typing longer function names, by the way, as soon as you see it in the list here, you can click it and then tab it into place if you wish. So we're looking in column G to count the blank cells. And as I complete the entry here, we see that that's obviously not right. We're looking in the entire column there. And that's why we get such a large number. Remember, there are well over a million rows in Excel. So that's not very helpful. And what we need to do here for this to be accurate, at least for the moment, is to select these cells right here in column G down to the bottom of our list right there. And as we complete the entry, we will have an answer and it will make sense. It's 28. There are 28 people who do not have benefits in this list. We could actually come up with a different way of calculating this. We also want to show you how if this list is a table, it's likely to be more direct. Here's a bit of information that at first may not seem that useful. If this list grows and shrinks, our total here is going to have to be readjusted. Our formula has to be different because we'll have a different number of rows. If we count the number of entries in column A, let's say we will always have entries in column A for every new row, we can do that simply now with equal count A. And A, of course, doesn't necessarily mean column A. It does in this case, but we can do this for any column. Count A, how many cells have data? Count A is sometimes described as, let's do a count of the cells that are not empty. So there's a hundred of them. Okay, that's a valuable bit of information. How many cells do we actually have in a column? We can do that with equal count blank. Once again, we'll tab it into place. And let's just focus on an empty column like column J. That's the total number of cells. So we can put this together in the appropriate way simply by writing a formula. Let's begin with this equal count A. Now we could type the count A, but why don't I just use this already? It's right there. Minus, and then we want to put in the calculation of the total number of cells, that's right here, and then subtract the number of blank cells that we get in column G. Another count blank. As we press enter here, it's not quite there. Now, all we really need to do here is put in parentheses correctly, and we should have a correct answer. In other words here, and that, of course, reverses the calculation. And there's our answer of 28. So I think you could say that wasn't exactly as straightforward as we might want it to be, but it is dynamic. And if this list grows or shrinks, we will always have a correct answer with that combination there. A more direct way could be if we wish to change this data into a table. Not everybody is familiar with this concept. It was introduced in Excel 2007. If you convert data to a table, it has some very obvious visual advantages, and it also has some formula advantages, as we'll see here. So we'll click with inside the data. We can either press Control L, think of L for lists, or Control T, T for table. You can get to this on the Home tab by way of the Format as Table option, or Insert tab, there's Table as well. Click OK, it's now a table. When you get a table, you also get field names automatically. And this time we'll start with count blank again, tab it into place. And now, somewhat differently than before, I'm going to be typing T for table. When you create a table, if you don't give it a special name, it's going to have a name like table one, table two, etc. And when I type T right here, we see in the list there's table one, the only table we've got in this workbook. So we can click that and tab it into place. Now tables have field names and they are delineated by brackets. So I'll type left bracket and look what we see. The different field names here. I'm interested in the benefits column right there. Tab it into place. A right bracket and simply press enter here. And we've got an answer. Much more direct than what we saw before. This doesn't mean that you always want to work with the table concept, but it does point out an additional benefit of it. This is a much simpler, direct, more readable, and more understandable formula than the earlier one that we saw. Keep in mind count blank can be used in a variety of other situations. In the list over here in columns M through R, we're simply showing how many sales were made on any given day by our various salespersons. Imagine they sell large equipment, so they don't sell a whole lot on any given day. We want to know how many days there were no sales for the employees here. And not one by one, although we could do it that way. We just want to simply know how many person no sale days were there equal count blank. 
once again, tab it into place possibly, select this data, and we quickly get a count of the blank cells. If you wanted to do this for each person, of course, possibly move this up here for the moment, we could of course then do equal count blank and then do it for each person, simply highlighting this data here. Press Control Enter, double click the corner, and do it per person as well. So you can see there are any number of different situations where count blank is ideal for counting blank cells. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. And we saw in an earlier example how valuable it could be for a different kind of list and how potentially valuable using table data might be with this function.